Imagine planning a perfect weekend getaway, only for your spouse to reveal he knows your darkest intentions. This is the moment when a wife's life falls apart, and it's chilling. James and Lisa Cooper, a childless married couple, are sitting at the kitchen table in their home in Columbus, Ohio. James, who is 44 years old, has just returned from work, while Lisa, aged 42, arrived about an hour earlier and is dressed in an elegant dark green dress, something she rarely wore on regular days. Near the front door, there's a small, stylish suitcase that looks brand new. Now, James, the most important thing I want you to finish this weekend is painting the nursery, Lisa started. The paint cans are right by the door, and the guy at the store said you need to apply at least two coats. Oh, before I forget, did you ask your parents if we can paint the spare room? I know they've told us to treat this house like it's our own, but it's still just common courtesy. Yeah, they're fine with it, James replied casually. Remind me again, Lisa. Why are we painting the nursery now when you're not even pregnant? Lisa sighed deeply, almost as if expecting this question. She loved James. He was an intelligent, hard-working man, a little more serious now that he was older but still kind-hearted. However, he could be frustratingly forgetful. Because, James, I've stopped taking the pills, so it's only a matter of time before I get pregnant and maybe another year before we have little ones running around the nursery. I told you I did some research, and it showed that even the safest paints can emit toxic fumes for up to a year after application. The main reason I'm leaving with Trish this weekend is that I'm sensitive to the smell of paint. Otherwise, I would stay, and we could do it together. Lisa had always been thorough and cautious, almost to a fault. This was part of the reason James had fallen for her. She was responsible, grounded, and took everything seriously, even if he sometimes wished she could be more spontaneous. Now, here's what I suggest, Lisa continued. First thing tomorrow morning, take my car to the service center on Broad Street. They'll give you a replacement for the day, and I've already booked it. Then come back here and apply the first coat of paint. That should keep you busy until around lunchtime. After that, if the service is done, pick up the car and head to Mom's. She'll feed you lunch, and mowing the lawn usually takes you the rest of the day. Dinner for tomorrow is in the fridge, ready to be heated. On Sunday morning, Apply the second coat of paint, and please keep the nursery door closed so the fumes don't spread throughout the house. Trish told me to let you know that Mark will pick you up around 1 p.m. for a round of golf at Riverside Golf Club. You can have dinner at the clubhouse, and Trish will drop me off here around 8. How does that sound? Wow, I'll be one busy, organized bee this weekend, won't I? James said with a chuckle, rubbing his forehead as if trying to absorb all the tasks Lisa had lined up for him. At that moment, Lisa's phone chimed with an incoming text. She glanced at it quickly. Trish is already leaving her house to pick me up. Now are you sure you have everything you need? Don't worry, woman. I'll be fine, James said, playfully rolling his eyes. Are you sure you don't want to stay here with me instead of going to a spa weekend with Trish? We could try to conceive a baby in those two days. Oh, tempting, James. Lisa laughed softly, her eyes twinkling for a moment. But as I see it, we'll have the rest of our lives for spontaneous weekends, and I only have a little time left to enjoy some freedom before I become a mother. Lisa had to turn away from her husband as she said this. Her image of herself as a decent, honest person had been deeply shaken by some recent choices she'd made. All right, Lisa, James sighed with a hint of reluctance. I suppose all that's left is for you to open this little farewell gift I bought for you. James reached under the table and placed a small wrapped box in front of Lisa, about the size of a deck of cards. She looked at it, a little puzzled. Should I open it now, James? Or can I do it over the weekend? She asked. That's up to you, James replied with a slight smile. You can open it now or later, but I strongly recommend using it this weekend. Lisa hesitated before tearing off the wrapping revealing a small box wrapped in cellophane. It took her a moment to realize what it was, and James broke the silence with an icy calm. I had to make an executive decision, but I figured twelve should be enough protection for two nights and two days at the spa with Travis. I took the risk of buying extra large ones because I assume he's bigger. After all, you wouldn't leave our marriage and future family for someone as average-sized as me, right? Lisa froze, 
her eyes widening in shock as she stared at the box of protection in her hand. James continued, his tone flat and unwavering. Anyway. I also assume your massive to-do list for me while you're away was meant to distract me from thinking about questions like why you avoided answering when I asked which spa you and Trish were going to, or why you convinced me not to call you this weekend. Lisa stood there, completely paralyzed. Her carefully laid plan to have one last fling before settling into motherhood, encouraged by her best friend, had just exploded in her face. She was left speechless, unable to comprehend how everything had unraveled so quickly. Did you keep the receipt for the paint, dear? James asked calmly. Yes, the room needs repainting, but I don't think a soft pastel shade suitable for either a boy or a girl is appropriate right now. I'll pick a different color when I drop your car off at the service center tomorrow. I suppose, thinking logically, you have no reason to rush back on Sunday afternoon since I now know what you're really going to be doing. Oh, and by the way, excellent acting. You were really convincing in your lies. James paused, watching as Lisa's face went pale. He had always suspected that Lisa was meticulous with her planning, but seeing her crumble now, it became clear to him that she had no backup plan in case her deceit was uncovered. Perhaps the fact that he not only knew what she was planning to do this weekend but also with whom convinced her that further lies were pointless. Maybe she finally remembered just how fundamentally honest she used to be. He waited until she finally looked up and met his eyes trying to gauge what she was thinking. You really think I'm still planning to leave for the weekend? She stammered. I, I can't go now. I have to stay. Why, Lisa? Well, the very thought of settling down and having a child was... It's been intimidating for me, Lisa confessed, her voice barely more than a whisper. But no, that's not it. Lisa, why do you want to stay here this weekend? What's the point? What would you accomplish? If Lisa had looked stunned before, now she looked entirely bewildered. Accomplished, James? I mean, I can explain why. So you can ask for forgiveness. James cut her off. After all, you haven't done anything yet. You plan to, but now, not anymore, right? Never? If Lisa had dared to look at James's face, she would have realized just how dead and irreparable the situation was. She had justified her intentions to herself, even though she'd known it was wrong before finally giving in to Trisha's endless suggestions about trying something exciting before becoming a mother. If she had ever thought about the consequences of getting caught, she had probably convinced herself that their marriage was strong enough to survive it. Now, knowing that nothing had happened, she already believed forgiveness had been given. All she thought she had to do was apologize, show remorse, and move forward with their lives. That's why James's next words caught her off guard. Just go, Lisa. Go to your adventure. Go to your mother. Honestly, I don't care where. Just go. For the first time since James's revelation, Lisa dared to meet her husband's eyes. He was looking down, his expression composed, yet there was a glimmer of pain in his eyes. It was faint, but it was there. Lisa thought that maybe if she left for a short while, things would cool down and she could figure out how to fix this. She started crafting an explanation for her mother in her head. How long should I stay away, James? She asked quietly. James looked at her with an expression of finality. Forever, Lisa. Lisa's jaw dropped. James ignored her reaction and continued. Yes, we had over five good years together, but it's over. There's nothing more to say. We don't have kids, and this house belongs to my parents. We both earn about the same, so there's no need to even talk about alimony. I spent the last two days moving our money into separate accounts. I think it's fair since I didn't waste a single cent while we were together, and you spent your share on clothes, that flashy car, and those weekend trips with Trish. I closed our joint accounts and credit cards before coming home. Sure, you could go to a lawyer, but it'll cost you more than what you could get back. If I were you, I'd treat this as a valuable lesson for your future relationships. James took a deep breath before delivering the final blow. And one more thing, Lisa, he paused dramatically. Get lost. Lisa felt herself teetering on the brink of disbelief and panic. How could it all have come to this? Hadn't they loved each other deeply for so long? She hadn't done anything yet, nothing at all. So why was he acting like this was the end of everything? Unless James had been shouting or screaming at that moment, Lisa would have felt better. It would have meant he still cared, 
that he was just venting his anger. But the cold, emotionless tone of his voice was more terrifying than any outburst. She looked at his face again, searching for some trace of the man she loved, and regretted it instantly. His face was expressionless, and his eyes now had the icy, steely look of someone who had made up his mind completely. There was no love, no pity, not even recognition that he was looking at the woman he once called his wife. But James, you have to believe me. How can you be so emotionless about this? You can't just stop loving me, just like that, Lisa pleaded, her voice trembling. In the same detached tone, James replied, Two days ago, I would have completely agreed with you. Now, I'm much wiser. James's voice grew sharper, and finally, anger flickered across his face. On Wednesday, I came home from work a few minutes early, with flowers for you, I might add, and parked in the driveway to wash the SUV. I came in through the back door, intending to surprise you with the flowers. And what happens? I hear you talking on the damn phone with that damn Trish. That's what happens. And what do I hear? You were laughing, planning to lie to me so you could slip away this weekend and sleep with Travis. You were giggling, making plans to keep me busy so I wouldn't have time to think about where you were or what you were up to. But James, you know I always giggle when I'm nervous. I... You laughed while stabbing me in the back, James interrupted her, his voice now shaking with emotion. Hearing that laugh almost instantly drained all the love I had for you, knowing that I would have just killed you if I kept walking to the kitchen. So I left. Since then, everything from my side has been an act. James fell silent, his chest heaving, his eyes dark with the hurt and betrayal he felt. He fought the urge to lash out, to break something to make her feel even a fraction of the pain she had inflicted on him. But he kept himself under control. Lisa's thoughts were spiraling, desperately searching for something, anything that could help her explain, convince him that it wasn't too late to fix things. If only she could make him believe that she hadn't done anything beyond planning this weekend. That this truly was the first time. That she did giggle when stressed. She had to convince him. It was all part of the plan. She wanted to be a mother. She wanted a family. James, I... James, now fiddling with his phone, pressed a button and then held it up to her, his face a mask of cold indifference. Her own voice emerged from the speaker, painfully clear. Ha 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 ha. I guess it'll be a hot thought imagining poor old naive James painting the nursery while I'm sleeping behind his back. Ha 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 ha. You could say I'm feathering our nest, trying out another man's charms in his nest. Even with all her attempts to rationalize her actions, this tiny snippet was devastating. For the first time, Lisa could truly see how hurtful her words had been. For a fleeting moment, she could understand the pain James must have felt when he first heard this, and the task of rebuilding his trust suddenly felt insurmountable, like staring up at the peak of Everest from the very base. At that moment, a car horn broke the silence. Trish had arrived. She remained in the car, probably hoping to avoid a confrontation, sensing the gravity of the situation. Lisa heard the horn and realized it wouldn't stop until she went out to talk to her supposed friend. But right now, her real battle was in this room with James. James pulled her out of her indecision. I guess that answers my question. What question, James? An hour ago, when I talked to Mark, he was still undecided about whether to confront his cheating wife before she left or set a trap for her while she was gone. I guess he's decided to go with the latter. Lisa glanced at the phone in James's hand and recalled that conversation with Trish on Wednesday. She was almost certain that James had heard enough from her side to figure out that Trish was an experienced adulteress. Her best friend was in deep trouble, and she didn't even know it yet. Turning around, Lisa rushed out of the house. It was raining heavily now and she jumped into the passenger seat of Trish's car, trembling. He knows. Who knows what? Trish asked, a hint of panic in her voice. Mark knows that you're going away this weekend to sleep with Peter, Lisa replied, her voice shaking. Without giving Lisa a chance to respond further, Trish slammed her foot on the gas pedal. Soon after, James heard the screeching tires outside, but he remained unfazed. He couldn't believe his luck at how smoothly he had gotten Lisa out of the house. He placed her suitcase on the porch, sent Mark a single-word message, enter, and grabbed his tools to start changing the locks. He whistled as he worked, feeling a sense of calm and purpose. Why shouldn't he? 
He had already shouted out his anger, cried over his regrets, and banished the betrayal from his life. Lisa was too busy crying and ranting on Trisha's shoulder to bother him with calls, and that suited him just fine. After changing all the locks, James sat at his computer, copied the audio file from his phone, and attached it to an email titled, Why I'm Divorcing Lisa. He sent it to all the contacts from both his and their shared address books. He felt justified in informing their mutual friends, her family, and even her colleagues. After all, Lisa had been very convincing when she looked him in the eyes and lied to his face. People needed to know what a deceitful liar she was. He didn't stop there. James also called Lisa's mother to explain everything verbally. He wanted to soften the blow of the email, to make sure it wouldn't come as too much of a shock. He thought he owed her that much, at least. By the time Trish and a protesting, unwillingly dragged along Lisa arrived at Trish's house, Mark had already changed the locks. While Trish banged on the door and screamed, Mark was calmly completing bank transfers on his laptop. All the accounts to which Trish had access now had a zero balance. Of course, she would eventually get her share, but only after she managed to find a way to pay for her own lawyer. He switched apps, opened Trish's email, and read a message received yesterday. At first glance, it appeared to be from Lisa, and hinted that all their carefully planned weekends away from their marriages had been successful. It even suggested that if their husbands found out and objected afterward, they might need to do something about them. In reality, the email was written by James, using Lisa's account, but to an outside observer, it would look genuine. If Trish didn't leave quietly, Mark could always use this email to threaten her with a restraining order. When it became clear that pounding on her own front door was futile and was only attracting the curious stares of her neighbors, Trish returned to her car where Lisa sat waiting in stunned silence. It took less than five minutes for years of friendship to dissolve into dust. Lisa blamed Trish for convincing her to take that step into infidelity, while Trish blamed Lisa for being careless and letting her husband overhear their plans. Trish dropped her former friend off at Lisa's old house and yelled, You're nothing but a cheater! Lisa's calls to James went unanswered. When she tried her keys, she found they no longer worked in the locks. Ashamed, she went to her mother's house, but even there she was greeted with a frosty reception. Over the weekend, James refused to respond to her attempts to contact him, but on Monday evening, he finally replied to a text message. If she came to the house at 2 p.m. the next day, he would arrange for the neighbor to let her in so she could collect her remaining personal belongings. During the following hours, Lisa rationalized that since James had been so composed and emotionless on Friday, he couldn't be that upset, and if she groveled enough, he might forgive her. She knew he was a reasonable man, so her plan was to get into the house on Tuesday, cook him a comforting meal, and then greet him at the door in an outfit she knew he liked. On Tuesday, the neighbor led her into the house and said he'd return later to check on what she planned to take. Lisa wandered around the home that once felt like her sanctuary. But now, she felt like an unwelcome guest. The faint scent of fresh paint lingered in the air, and the door to the nursery was closed. Out of curiosity, she decided to see what color James had chosen. Opening the door, she stepped inside and froze in place. The blood drained from her face as she took in the sight before her. James had used the paint she had purchased, but instead of decorating the walls with love, he had covered them with words, bold and damning. They screamed at her from every corner of the room. Liar, adulteress, deceived, five wasted years, and betrayal. Lisa leaned against the doorframe as the weight of her actions hit her with full force. She looked down, horrified to see the paint still wet, leaving a streak on her sleeve. She jumped away, trembling, feeling as though she had been branded, marked for her betrayal. For the first time, Lisa saw her actions for what they truly were and she began to understand the depth of the damage she had caused, not just to James, but to herself as well. Crying out in remorse for her husband and mourning the life they had lost, Lisa Marie Cooper gathered what little dignity she had left, collected her belongings, and with the weight of her shame bearing down on her shoulders, left the house that had once been her home for the last time. Lisa's calls to James remained unanswered, and any hope she had of talking him into a reconciliation dwindled with each passing hour. On Monday morning, 
she received one last message. If she came to the house at 2 p.m., James would have a neighbor oversee her as she collected her personal belongings. Lisa rationalized that since James had been so emotionless on Friday, he wasn't truly angry. She convinced herself that if she groveled and showed genuine remorse, he might eventually forgive her. She had always known James to be a logical, reasonable man, so her plan was to enter the house, prepare his favorite meal, and then welcome him with open arms, hoping to win him back. When Tuesday arrived, their neighbor Mr. Jenkins led her inside. I'll come back in an hour or so, he said, giving Lisa a sympathetic but stern look. Make sure you have everything you need by then. As soon as he left, Lisa wandered around the house, feeling like an intruder. Every room echoed with memories of happier times, and now those same rooms felt like a museum of her failures. She finally made her way to the nursery, the place that had been the heart of their future dreams. The door was shut, but the faint smell of fresh paint lingered. Out of curiosity and a growing sense of dread, Lisa opened the door. The sight that greeted her drained the last bit of color from her face. Words, angry, heartbroken words, were splashed across the walls in thick, uneven strokes. Cheater. Liar. Stole my trust. Destroyed us. Five years gone. Lisa's breath caught in her throat, and she took a step back, bumping into the doorframe. Her arm brushed against the still wet paint, leaving a streak on her skin as though branding her with the very betrayal she had committed. Stumbling out of the room, Lisa finally broke down. For the first time since James had confronted her, she let herself feel the full weight of what she had done. She saw her actions through James's eyes, the life they had built, and the future they had planned now lying in ruins because of her choices. Crying, shaking, Lisa Marie Cooper gathered her things, taking only what was absolutely necessary, filled with guilt, shame, and the painful knowledge of the irreparable damage she had caused. She walked out of the house for the final time. As she left, she could hear the faint echoes of laughter, memories from a happier time that would never return. James, however, was moving on. As he watched her leave through the living room window, he felt no satisfaction, only a deep, enduring sense of loss. It was a loss not only of the love they once shared, but also of the person he thought Lisa was, the woman he believed would be his partner for life. Later that evening, he sat down at his laptop to finalize the divorce papers. He didn't want revenge or to prolong the pain, but he needed to close this chapter of his life. As for Lisa, she spent the following months attempting to rebuild her life, but it was never the same. Every time she thought about what might have been, every time she saw a couple holding hands or a family playing in the park, she was reminded of the life she'd thrown away. And every time, it hurt just a little bit more. In the end, the nursery remained unpainted, the walls a permanent testament to a lesson learned too late. And for James, as he stood in that room one last time before moving out, he couldn't help but hope that one day he would find someone who would love him for who he was. Someone who wouldn't betray him, who wouldn't lie to him, and who would be there to help him repaint the walls of a new nursery, in a new home, with a new future.